Yesterday, I mentioned to someone that I was doing 2D graphics benchmarks, and they said, what, for retro gaming? No, for browsing, for Office. Welcome to Gadget Blues, this is KC, and today we are taking a look at 2D graphics performance. Now, before you turn this off, 2D graphics performance is important and sorely overlooked in today's benchmarking world. By 2D, I mean the graphics that are used to do virtually everything on your machine except play games. Using applications such as Office, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Adobe Lightroom, things of that nature. All of these applications that I mentioned and a whole lot more use Microsoft's Direct2D API. Direct2D is part of the DirectX suite and it was developed several years ago by Microsoft as a way to give high performance applications more direct access to graphics. So as monitor resolution and number of monitors increases and the features of the apps increase, they can continue to perform at a high level. Adoption of Direct2D by developers has improved dramatically since its release in approximately 2010. Another thing that's very important besides Direct2D is the acceleration of modern video playback codecs. The Intel integrated graphics up through the Skylake platform only accelerate H.264 MPEG-4 codecs. And while Intel has added H.265, otherwise known as HEVC, acceleration in the latest KB Lake CPUs, that's about the only major feature that they added because the performance otherwise, as you've seen if you've been watching KB Lake benchmarks, is about the same. The other codec that has become very recently important is VP9, which has been pushed by Google via YouTube as their next generation codec for streaming, especially in high resolution. While VP9 is not brand new, the fact that YouTube has recently started encoding virtually all of its 4K content into VP9 as a default has been a recent development, and that means that VP9 is now vastly more important than it was even a month ago. You can get hardware acceleration for VP9 and HEVC without buying a KB Lake CPU. So the object of the video here today is to see if a $99 entry-level modern GPU from the current chipset of both AMD and NVIDIA can provide a significant performance benefit to your existing desktop machine in office, browsing, and we know it does video playback. So I'm gonna do benchmarks on the browsing and the office performance and we'll see how that turns out. For general performance, I'm going to be using the Passmark benchmark, running only the 2D section of it, which includes a direct 2D benchmark. Then on the browsing side, I am going to be using two different graphics focused web benchmarks. Keep in mind that if I were running, say, a JavaScript benchmark that just ran scripting behind the scenes of the browser and reported the speed of that, that would be only CPU intensive. I'm looking at the graphics here. So I'm gonna use two browser benchmarks. One of them is an older benchmark by FutureMark, which is known for doing gaming benchmarks, but they also have a rather legacy web graphics performance benchmark called Peacekeeper and that was developed around 2009, 2010. I'm including that in its latest rev, even though it's no longer supported by FutureMark because I want to see how these cards perform versus the Intel IGP on last generation HTML4 style browsing experiences. Then finally, to look at the latest HTML5 based browser performance in graphics, I am going to be using a benchmark called MotionMark which is a very recent development from browserbench.org. The test system I will be using for this is a Core i5-6600. That is a very typical quad-core setup that would be used in productivity and business applications. And on it, I'm running 
two monitors at 1920 by 1200, that's 1610 aspect ratio that is very commonly used for productivity because it has a little more vertical space than 1920 by 1080. This system has 16 gigs of DDR4 and the integrated graphics are Intel Graphics 530. Up against the Intel Graphics 530, we have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 and a Radeon RX 460. Both of these have two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. That GDDR5 memory should be the big deciding factor on these cards beyond the graphics core itself because the Intel IGP is restricted to using shared system memory. So it's running on much slower DDR4. I'm not going to do video playback benchmarks because I know that both of these cards in all their incarnations have very good working HEVC and VP9 acceleration and that the quad core i5 will have 40-50% CPU utilization in playback of high res HEVC. So these are an unquestionable improvement in that regard. Just keep that in mind while we're talking about the 2D bench. So that's the setup. Let's take a look at the benchmarks themselves. The way I've set up these charts is that the Intel IGP is set at a baseline of 100% performance and the other two cards are expressed as a plus or minus percent versus the Intel. First up are the Passmark results. Now Passmark runs Direct2D and other 2D benchmarks that are a good proxy for general desktop applications including Office and Lightroom, things of that nature. I was pretty surprised at the performance difference that we're seeing here at about 9% performance improvement for the GeForce and 13% for the Radeon. This is very interesting because as we get into a 10% performance improvement, that is a significant milestone that you're going to notice in everyday activity as opposed to a lower amount that might get lost in the noise of network latency and other things that are taking up processing speed on your machine. Moving to Peacekeeper, which as I noted earlier is an older benchmark that reflects more of the HTML4 era of browser performance. We're seeing less of a performance gain here because in that era things were not quite as performance intensive and a faster card will not really be challenged by that level of graphics. Here we're seeing an increase of only two or three percent with Chrome having a little bit more of a benefit over Edge. Moving on to the more modern MotionMark browser benchmark, we are seeing a pretty huge difference here. This is way more than I expected to see. I was really kind of expecting the five to 10% performance difference and we're seeing 18% in Chrome and 114% to 116% in Edge. That is pretty amazing. And that is a performance improvement that I think that you could not fail to notice on your machine. On MotionMark, we're seeing more of an improvement with Chrome than we see with Edge. It's not that Edge is slower, it's just that Chrome benefits more from the discrete graphics than Edge does. I think that's because Microsoft has done a lot of optimization on Edge to perform on lower end machines, which generally have Intel IGP. So here's the big picture with the benchmarks across the board improved on both the Radeon and the GeForce. We see less of a benefit with the legacy Peacekeeper benchmark than we do with the modern benchmarks, but that really tells the story of how HTML5 is more graphics intensive and more reliant on hardware than older web graphics standards. So that's how it turned out. I am really impressed at the performance of discrete cards versus the Intel IGP. I really had no idea it would be that large. Up to 18% is very noticeable. And I think I would recommend that for folks that have a desktop PC with an Intel IGP and at least a quad core CPU. The amount of CPU that you would have to buy to improve that machine to get 18% better performance would be pretty significant and hugely expensive. The fact that you get both that 18% better browsing performance as well as the acceleration for the new video playback formats in both of these options, then I think versus upgrading to the latest KB Lake CPU, you would be better off spending 99 bucks on a discrete graphics card if it will fit in your case 
than upgrading your CPU. And if you already have a high-end core i7 with a quad-core CPU and you don't have a discrete graphics card, you are definitely cheating yourself in terms of performance and should go ahead and get a discrete card. This can only become more important and more accentuated as you get more pixels on the display by migrating to a 4K monitor or multiple monitors if you only have one at the moment. The more pixels you have, the more horsepower you need to run them. And these are a good option to future-proof your existing IGP system. I came into this thinking, hey, this will end up with a recommendation of a entry-level discrete graphics card if you're building a high-end system today with a quad-core. But it turned out to be a recommendation pretty much across the board. If you have any quad-core CPU, i5 or up, and you don't already have a discrete card, this latest generation from both AMD and NVIDIA are really pushing the pixels, man. Now bear in mind, this is just graphics performance we're talking about. There are other limiting factors like network speed and so forth, but a lot of the web and office today is graphics dependent. And if you are a heavy productivity user, think of what your time is worth and how much these cards cost today. And it seems to be a no-brainer. Just run, do not walk to get a latest generation discrete GPU if you don't already have one. So that's what I have for you today. Some pretty interesting results. And I hope you enjoyed this look at 2D graphics performance. Please like and subscribe. And we will see you in the next Gadget Blues.